Junior Lieutenant Carter could feel beads of sweat forming on his brow. With the Ogren's foolish bluster, there was no more talking their way out of the situation. No pretending to be part of their mad uprising just to be able to slip past. No. Now they had to fight. A dozen wounded, unarmed Ogren, half of whom were seriously wounded, and one unproven green officer against miscreant cultists armed with any firearm they could grab, and one carried a rocket launcher, likely stolen from the local PDF armory. But it didn't matter. They were all dead. Lieutenant Carter did the only thing he could think of. A mad thought. He reached into his breast pocket, grabbed what was inside, and threw it at the cultists. The men flinched, expecting a grenade or some sort of weapon. It was the pad of paper he had used to take the Ogren's roll call. It was the moment of distraction Og needed. Get him! The bonehead ran forward, swinging his huge fists. Dingus and the able-bodied Ogrens followed him with loud, bellowing shouts. The cultists regained their composure and began firing at the enraged Ogrens. The man with the rocket launcher panicked and quickly raised his weapon and fired. The rocket sailed just over Og's head and struck the side of the warehouse beside them, sending down a shower of debris and rock creek dust. Auto gun bullets and las blasts impacted into Og's flesh, but he held his metal arm in front of him like a bullgrin shield to protect himself. He was big, and he was strong, and he was tough. And he was moving fast. And he did not stop. For Og, it was like weathering a terrible sandstorm for a normal human. The sand stings the flesh, and can even begin to peel it away. And so it was with the Ogren. He forced his way through the hail of bullets and las fire until his fist found the face of the first cultist. The man's skull partially caved in from the impact before his head snapped back and twisted kind of funny. He fell down. He did not get back up. The ogrins fell on the cultists who began to panic and flee as soon as they saw the terrifying rage of the tremendous creatures. They were smashing, crushing, and punching, leaving the broken bodies of the cultists scattered around the alleyway. The rocket-wielding cultist managed to reload a second rocket and fire again. An unfortunate ogren by the name of Sal was struck directly in the chest. His powerful form was not strong enough to withstand the explosion, but he did shield those behind him. Sal burst in a shower of gore. This only enraged Og more. The bonehead seized the cultist and gripped him by his feet and his head, and as easily as a child pulls apart a party cracker, Og tore the wretched man in two and sent his soul to whatever dark masters he served. Many of the cultists began scurrying back into the hole they came from. Og though he was out of breath and bloody, was about to climb in after them and pursue the bad men when Lieutenant Carter grabbed a hold of the Ogren's arm. The lieutenant grabbed a las gun from one of the fallen cultists as well. Og, no! We need to get the wounded to the hospital! Hells, we need to get you to the hospital! The Tin the King, King offers, offers freedom! freedom. The Tin King offers prosperity. The Tin King will raise up the lowly and topple the proud tyrants. Spotlights began to scan the street at the far end of the alley as the rebel patrols drew near. Og, we have to go now. Yes, sir, Lieutenant Carter, sir. At this point, the Ogrens were moving quite slowly. 
More were wounded, more were bleeding. They were barely able to hobble out of the alleyway when the mining walkers stomped past with their sweeping searchlights. We can't keep doing this. Staying above ground, we're just out in the open. We're sitting ducks. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure we're standing ogwins. Give me a moment, Ogg. I, I need to think. We can't go underground. It it's likely crawling with rebels, and I don't think I could navigate the service tunnels. Uh, I wish we could fly over. Uh, that would be really easy. Ogg, I said I need to... Wait, wait a minute. What did you say? It said it would be really easy if we could fly over. Right, right, right. But we can't fly over exactly. But we have the sky paths. The streets of Polis are packed with people and vehicles all the time. The sky paths were put in to alleviate foot traffic. Look! Og looked above himself, and he could see that among some of the high spires of the city, there were what looked like tubes made of glass and ferrocrete that ran from building to building. I know where the nearest entry point is, and I think I can take the sky path all the way to the hospital. But we can't be spotted. We need to move quickly. Og and Dingus helped the other ogrins limp their way into an abandoned administratum hub. Og couldn't figure out why so many people and so many scrolls and so many books were in one place. But to be honest, Lieutenant Carter couldn't discern the place's purpose either. The turbo lifts were out, so it was a long stair climb to reach the sky path. Lieutenant Carter instructed the Ogrens to put pressure on the wounds that were bleeding a lot. Hopefully the haughty constitutions of the abhumans would carry them through. After an exhausting ascent, they made it. Before them was the tube, and Lieutenant Carter could see the zigzagging path to the hospital. They were not so far away at all. But it would be so easy to spot them, and they would be extremely vulnerable if they were to be fired upon by the rebels while they were in the tubes. Og could hear auto gun and las gun discharges in the distance. Occasionally, big booms would shake the sky path tube. It sounded like some of the PDF forces were getting more organized and fighting back. But from their vantage point through the fragile glass of the tube, they could see more and more lights sweeping back and forth through the city as far as the eye could see. Tiny figures swarmed like ants beneath them, and the praises of the Tin King echoed from every direction. There were so many of them. All right, Ogrins. Everyone will need to crawl on their bellies. It's going to be a long way, and we have no idea if the hospital is even a safe place. But we have to try. Come on, like this. The junior lieutenant began crawling on his belly, just like in basic training. The Ogrins followed suit. Some leaving streaks of blood behind them like slug trails. Time seemed to crawl just as slowly as the wounded ogrins. The battle for Polis raged beneath them, occasionally shaking the sky path. Truly, it was in the Emperor's hands now. The lieutenant held out hope that maybe, just maybe, they would be able to make it to safety. No man do they call me. My mother and my father, and all my comrades as well. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of Og the Ogren Returns. If you enjoyed what you heard, please leave a like and a comment so that you too can sneak your way past a sea of rebels with enormous lumbering wounded ogrens in tow. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so in order to hear more stories about the glories of the Tin King and the lies of the ruthless oppressive nobles. If you would like to support me, you can do so via Patreon or PayPal. Both of those will be linked in the description below. 
If you have absolutely no idea what's going on, you can click on the Og the Ogren Returns playlist, which should be appearing on screen right now. Thank you all once again for listening. No Man Out.